Hello everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Kalina and today I'm going to take you through the solution to question 6 from this Leaving Cert higher level paper and this question is based on geometry. So in question A we're asked to construct the circumcenter of the triangle XYZ. We're asked to only use a compass and a straight edge and we're asked to label the circumcenter C and to show all our construction lines clearly and that basically means don't rub anything out. So to do this question what you're going to want to do is construct perpendicular bisectors of two sides of the triangle and then once you've done this find the point of intersection of these two perpendicular bisectors and that is your circumcenter. So I'm not going to be able to do this here because I don't have a compass. What I'm going to do is just demonstrate. So if you find the perpendicular bisector of x, y first. First of all, what you're, what you're going to want to do is put one end of the compass here, the end without the pencil, and construct an arc, right? Just make sure that your arc is going over halfway on the line and just judge this yourself. So say you get something like this. And then for Y here, again, put the end with no pencil there and construct an arc. You might get something like this. Now what you're going to want to do is get your ruler and find the perpendicular bisector like so by passing it through this point and this point. Okay, so that is your perpendicular bisector there. Now what you're going to want to do is do the same for another side. So let's do ZY. So again, get your compass, put the end with no pencil here, open it up so it's going to pass halfway of the line and swing an arc. Do the same on the other side with the same length of the compass. Okay, don't change the length of the compass. Swing an arc like so and then find this point here, this point here and draw a ruler through it like so. Now, using your ruler, what you're going to want to do is continue this line until it hits the other perpendicular bisector. So that point, now this isn't drawn to scale because I haven't used an actual compass. So it'll probably look different if you actually use a compass. But whatever point where they intersect, that is the point C. And that is that question done. So for this question, you're actually going to get 15 marks, which as you can see, that's an awful lot of marks for what you've done. So construction questions carry a lot of marks. So I would highly recommend you to have your constructions off the top of your head. Practice them at home because they'll pay off in the exam. So now let's move on to question B. And in question B, we're told that the points A, B, C and D lie in a circle. And we're told that they're shown in the diagram, but it's not to scale. A, B is the diameter of a circle and D, A, C is 40 degrees as shown. And that's shown here. The triangle A, B, D is isosceles and we're asked to find the angle A, D, C. So first of all, I'm just going to mark the angle A, D, C in pink. So it goes from A to D to C. So that's this angle here. So now what we're going to do, using the information that they've given us, we're going to fill out any angles that we know, and this is going to help us to work out ADC. So first of all, we're told that AB is the diameter of a circle. So we know that when we're given a diameter, the diameter splits the circle in two. And in a semicircle, any angle in a semicircle, which touches the outside of the circle, is 90 degrees. It's a right angle is 90 degrees. So here's our diameter from A to B. So this angle here... Angle ADB is 90 degrees. So that's our first piece of information. We're also told that the angle DAC is 40 degrees, but that's already given. We're told that the triangle ABD is an isosceles. And what does that mean for us? That means that this angle here and this angle here are going to be the same. So there's 180 degrees in a triangle. Take away this angle, which we already know to be 90 degrees and you're left with 90. But we know that the angle at A and the angle at B have to be the same. So we just divide this evenly in two, and we get 45 degrees each. So this is 45 degrees. This is 40 degrees, so we know that this here must be five degrees. What else can we work out from this? We can work out that this angle here, the angle at C, is also 45 degrees. And we know that this is 45 degrees because it's standing on the same arc as this angle here. They're both standing on AD. So you can write this out in the space below when you're doing the exam yourself, just to make sure you're getting all the marks possible. So you can write angle ACD is equal to 45 degrees, dot, 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 same arc as angle ABD. So they must be the same value of an angle. So now I can see that we're really getting close to finding the angle ADC. Can you see the triangle here? And I'm just gonna point it out in purple. So we know that this triangle must be 180 degrees. We have two of the three angles. We have 40 degrees and we have 45 degrees. So 180 minus 40 
minus 45 degrees is equal to angle ADC, which is this angle here in pink. So let's work that out. 180 minus 40 minus 45. And that gives us an answer of 95 degrees. So it tells us that there's space for a solution on the next page. I just didn't use it here because it was easier to just work with the circle. So I'm just going to write my answer here. Angle ADC, which is what we were asked for, is equal to 95 degrees. And for this question, you're going to get a total of 10 marks. Let's now move on to question C. And in question C, we're told that the diagram shows the triangle PQR. We're told that the angle at R is greater than 90 degrees. So this angle here is greater than 90 degrees. K is the circumcircle of PQR. And you'll remember at the start of this question, question A, we constructed the circumcenter. So the circumcircle is just the circle around that circumcenter. We're told that O is not shown in the diagram, but we're asked to prove that O cannot be inside the triangle PQR. So if K is the circumcircle, O must be in the center of this circle. So at first glance, in my opinion, it's pretty obvious that O can't be inside the triangle. O should be maybe somewhere here looks like the center, but we can't just say that. We need to actually prove it. So it tells us that if you are proving this by contradiction, your first line should be assume that O is inside the triangle PQR. This is a hint that you should prove it by contradiction. So I'm going to start with that line. So if we assume that O is here, we're going to use theorem 19. THM is just short for theorem. Theorem 19 saying that two angles, one at the center of a circle and one at the circumference of the circle standing on the same arc. Okay, the one at the center of the circle is twice the one at the circumference. So I'm just going to draw that. So that means that if this angle here and this angle here, okay, so this angle and this angle, because O is the center, we're assuming, this is twice the angle at R. So I'm just going to write that out. So the angle POQ must be two times the angle P or Q. So that's basically just stating that. So theorem 19 says that in this case, the angle POQ, which is standing at the same arc in the center of the circle, is twice the angle standing at the same arc at the circumference of the circle. So that means, therefore, the angle POQ must be greater than 180 degrees because the angle P or Q is greater than so the angle PRQ is greater than 90 degrees. And you can just state that this cannot be because it can't be greater than 180 degrees. That just wouldn't make sense because it would be greater than a straight line because that would be 180 degrees. So it would be like this. Okay, so that wouldn't make sense for this question. This cannot be. Therefore, O cannot be inside the triangle PQR. And that's just notation there for the triangle. So instead of writing at the triangle PQR, you can just write triangle PQR. So in my opinion, this question C was quite a difficult question, but it's actually only worth five marks. So there's no need to panic if you found it really difficult. There's probably a reason that there's only five marks going for it. The people who are laying at the exam knew that this would be a question that maybe not everyone could answer. Now that's all for this video guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it cleared up any questions that you may have had based on this question and I'll see you all in the next video.